Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, Jack and Lady still down at Lake Jackson because of COVID. So this is coming from my little shitty galley kitchen in my apartment, so I apologize for that. Okay, uh, last week we did a bunch of salads because it's New Year, New Me. Fuck a bunch of resolutions, man. It is New Year, Old Me. Let's do some chicken tenders. Now they're baked, so it's going to be a little healthier, but... Yeah. Before we get into it, be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the little bell, do all the little YouTube stuff. We very much appreciate it. Check out our link down at the doobly doo for our merch stuff, like with the aprons and the oven mitts and all that kind of stuff. And let's just get into it, man. All right, so you're going to need uh, some chicken to start out with. Oh, you want to thaw it. This is frozen. Uh, definitely going to have to cook this in a minute. Uh, <laughs> you're going to need about a third cup of flour and about two eggs, depending on the size of your eggs. Uh, two usually is good enough for about a pound and a half of chicken. Now, we're going to bake these using this pre-cooked stuff. Uh, it's usually just panko. You can use this, the, the flour and eggs and stuff. We'll use that as a control later, but that's all you need. And then if you're going to dress it, you know, I usually use some of the flying sauce or some, uh, you know, rattlesnake sriracha or ranch nice and classic and fancy or you got to try this stuff this was this nashville chicken stuff it was a dry rub really good works out really well so first things first get you a bowl get you a couple of eggs crack them in there and then just beat them like they owe you money now these eggs i got from my father these are yard eggs you're gonna start out with two of these now if you need more later you can always add more later but just start with two now we keep an eye on these in case they didn't clean them when you got them in the yard and uh, or if you drop any shell in there when it breaks like i had a little bit of shell break off so you just reach in pull that out it's not that big a deal i get you a fork and poke the yolks and then just stir the crap out now that's the movie magic makes it go that fast but we didn't see you run your fork on it and it doesn't really have anything hanging off of it it might take a minute <laughs> so you get that done you get that third of a cup of flour put on a small plate right and you're gonna have that and then you want another one that's gonna have uh your your uh, panko battering uh any this is the same as frying anything else so if you can put your panko battering the, uh, the breading that you have from this uh cornbread stuff so you're gonna put it in the eggs or the flour then the eggs then that stuff and then put it on a plate to rest so get your meat put it in your flour get it nice and coated you can have creaks and cracks and crevices anywhere that you can get it in there i know it seems backwards but do that first and it helps the egg adhere to the chicken you think it'd be the other way around make it wet with the egg and put it in the flour but this is just how it works run off a little bit of that don't want too much of it off and then put it right into your breading whatever you're going to use now this was the, the honey bourbon stuff that turned out really well so get it a nice coat flip it around make sure that anywhere that's cover with that egg has that stuff on it pick it up turn it whatever uh, i've had people say to do the same thing you can put it in a bag and toss it around but with all three of these ingredients i don't see how a bag would hold it and every time i've done that oh yeah and your fingers are going to look like they need to be fried too so uh, be careful so this takes a little bit and it makes a bit of a mess be careful so i had these laid out and they're ready to go in the oven so i used both kinds right the buffalo and the stuff so get you a nice baking sheet put this at 400 in your oven right get it go ahead and preheat while you're doing the rest of this stuff now you can just put this straight on the thing or you can use some uh, cooking spray i do and i really didn't need to but i do just because i'm nervous and superstitious so go ahead and put that on there now once you get that on there go ahead and transfer these over again i've only done these once you know usually when i fry stuff i go back and i dip them twice in my breading and stuff and the eggs but this time i only did once these coated really well uh, they were like a dollar for the box, so they did really well. And I did do one that was a control. This is the one that's down here on the end. It's just flour and egg to see if it makes all right. So you want to put it in here at 400 for 30 minutes. So uh, I didn't cook in 30 minutes. Now we'll get into that in a second. So with chicken, you want that internal temperature to get to 165. So after 30 minutes, I pulled these out. These look good to go, but the interior of the chicken wasn't good enough. So I got this handy dandy little meat thermometer and man it takes a while for it to heat up to get that thing so i sped it up a little bit this is one of those things it might look good on the outside but once you dig down on the inside it's not so good for you it could probably be good to go i just didn't want to test that pink chicken so it got to about 145 150 so that was about 15 degrees shorter than i wanted to so i put it back in for another 10 minutes so right at 40 minutes it seems to be the way to do it so after that extra 10 minutes pulled it out Went ahead and got my same meat thermometer and stuck it down in there. Bam. It was like almost 170. So we're good to go. So about 40 minutes and you're set. These are outstanding. I served this one next to the ranch and I put some of the Nashville chicken hot stuff on it, which is great, except I have a split for my lip and that hurt. 
this is outstanding. This is a meal for anybody, and it's super simple, super easy, especially if you got people around or small children that are picky eaters. I've heard that, you know, you go to a steakhouse and they still want chicken tenders or whatever, so this would be perfect for that kind of stuff. Also, it's healthier than frying it, but not as healthy as the salad. So this, was, <laughs> this is going to be at least three meals for me, especially now that I'm trying to do my resolution thing, so it might be th- uh, four meals. If <laughs> if you had people around or small kids, this would be like one or two meals or just one meal for like four people. This would be excellent. This is pretty good. I, I want to try some more of this kind of stuff. And there you have it, folks. Some baked chicken tenders. Uh, this is outstanding. This is something really nice. If you do it differently or you do it's a different product and stuff, that's why we use the boxing this time. Let us know. Put it down in the comments, man. Maybe we'll revisit this. You know, I like cooking these and eating these, so it doesn't bother me. I'll revisit it anytime you want. Put it down in the comments. Let us know. You can also find us on social media. Let us know there. You can find us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Patreon. You can find us on all those at Living Between Paychecks Kitchen or on Instagram at Living Between. And uh, I'll see you next time, man. I'm going to eat some more of these chicken things. These are great.